Hello folks, I've cooked up a script to walk through some standard model building processes. I'll first demonstrate the processes in HyperMesh, then walk through the script, uh, commenting on each of the mechanisms for creating collections, executing commands, etc. And then of course, I'll run the script in HyperMesh. To start, I'll bring over our model, starting with IVM.HM. We currently have two components. I'll delete the existing middle surface and then we can recreate. So from the 2D ribbon, I'll use middle surface, select my solid and mid surface. In the new component, uh, I can then change my color to help differentiate. Let's now de-feature some of the remaining holes I'll go to topology, defeature holes, and I'll set it to my maximum of one. I'll find those holes and remove. Now let's generate a mesh. I'll go to 2D and freeform and select the surfaces in the second component, our middle surface. Let's generate with a mesh of 0 0.25. Let's now map our thickness from the source solid to the 2D shell mesh. Our source will be from comp one and our target mesh will be from comp two. After the thickness is calculated, we can toggle on and off our 2D thickness here with display 2D shells as 3D elements. Let's now create a new material from the model browser, right click, create material. I'll give this new material the name aluminum and assign some appropriate values. Let's now assign this material to our property that we generated with the thickness mapping. So I can double click on my P shell to open a uh, browser just for that entity. Selecting my uh, P shell and then shift plus E to open up my entity editor. This is dockable uh, and hideable in the 24 release with shift plus E. Let's assign our material. So aluminum is now assigned to this particular card image. Let's now generate a load step input for a normal modes analysis. So a load step input, we'll call this frequency EIGRL with the V1, a lower uh, bound of the frequency range of one and I'll ask for 10 roots. Let's now generate a load step. I'll specify that this, uh, the title is normal modes. Space there. And I'll set my analysis type to normal modes. I can then specify the structural method, in which case I'll point to the frequency EIGRL card and with that, we are ready to run this analysis. Let's do a file save as HyperMesh model, call this IB manual. Alrighty, so that's the process. Let's take a look at our script now and uh, look at repeating that process from the Python API. So to begin, we will first need to import a couple of libraries. We start, I start with OS just so that I can get file paths and whatnot. Um, to operate within the HyperMesh Python API, we'll need to import HM as well as HM entities as int. This allows us to access uh, that second level a bit easier. After this, I'll point 
to, or I'll define my script directory and my model file uh, using some OS commands, and then uh, create a new session, define the model entity from that session, and then into uh, our session, we will read model file, which is, of course, from our directory. I've gone ahead and predefined some user inputs. In our case, the diameter for the hole that we, the holes we want to defeature, the mesh size, our modulus of elasticity for the material, and the number of roots we want for our normal modes analysis. Within the Python API, we can create collections. You can think of this similar to the uh, the mechanism in our uh, previous TCL API of creating a mark and passing that mark ID to a command. Um, in our case, collections are named entities and you can have as many of them as you want. So this uh, is a nice enhancement from the mark one, mark two options in TCL. To create a collection, we'll first point to our model entity, define the entity type, and then we can either identify it by a data name or even a, uh, a UID. Once I have a collection, I can then uh, perform a series of operations on it. The one that is uh, utilized in this example is delete items. So the items that exist within this collection object are then deleted. We can create a collection of solids by, uh, again, using hm.collection, pointing to our model, and then defining the entity as the solids in the model. If we do not pass any arguments after that, it will co create a collection of all solids that exist in the model. After this, we can add some print statements to inform uh, the user from the console of what's about to happen. We'll then use the model method, midsurface extract, and we'll point to our solid collector and then pass some arguments that uh, are generated from our, these are essentially the options uh, that we'll utilize during these midsurfacing operations. After I've generated our midsurface, uh, what I can use to find the latest entity ID of our components is model and then hm underscore latest entity ID. This is a query method, and these query methods will return two objects, a status object and a result. Um, status will basically tell us if the query was successful. Result will give us the, uh, the information from the query request. So I can then assign my new component ID, or rather my component object, is int.component, the component entity, from this model that we're working in, and I want the ID that is provided back from our result. So result.entity provides the ID. Uh, I'll then create a comp collection, so a collection of the one component, um, by again defining model, the entity type, as well as the component ID provided in a list form. After this, I can show and hide uh, various components. I'll first start by hiding all uh, of the model, so model.hideAll, and then show entity on just the entity component. I can then adjust entity attributes. So comp.color is the color attribute of the component entity. Maybe we can set that to a new ID. In this case, it's color 31 from our uh, predefined colors. After I've defined my component entity, I then need to collect the surfaces associated to that component. We can do this with what we call filter by collection. This is a method of uh, applying a filter to a collection such that I can get the surfaces associated with a component. So this is a filter that we can then utilize on our collection. So I asked for, uh, from our model, I want the filter comps, or rather comp to surface, acting on the comp collector. This gets me the surfaces associated with the components in that collector. 
After this, I will go ahead and use the model method, surface mark remove all pinholes, in which I poli uh, uh, provide the surface collection and our diameter variable. We'll then generate a mesh using the model method default remesh surface, pointing to again those surfaces, that surface collection, and our uh, mesh size variable, as well as some other inputs. Once I've generated that mesh, I can again use my filtering mechanism to create a collection of elements from our uh, comp collector. After I've uh, created a collection of those elements, I can then map the thickness to those elements from our solid uh, and using a thick thickness output option to assign the property to the elements with a specific uh, numeric precision. If you'd like to adjust your visualization options, those can be accessed through hm.set option in which uh, the argument here is detailed elements shell viz. This is again, the equivalent of displayed 2D shells as 3D solids. One being on, zero being off. We can then create a new material. So again, to define a new material that doesn't exist, uh, we can just uh, us essentially create a new material with int.material, pass it our model name, and then the attributes that we want. So name equals aluminum, card image equals mat one. You can assign all of your information during the creation or Alternatively, you can modify uh, these attributes after the fact. In our case, I'm saying the entity attribute, uh, E, elastic modulus, we're going to set that to our predefined variable, mat E, that I defined above. We'll then define our new and row, and then give a quick multi-line uh, print statement in which we define uh, what the name, card, image, E, and new are for that particular material. We'll then grab, uh, or rather generate a handle for our property of ID one, such that we can uh, assign the material ID to this property. So in the next step, we'll say the entity attribute material ID equals the object material that we've defined again. So again, this is very much object oriented. The property object has an entity attribute that is our material, just like we see in HyperMesh. So if I take a peek at my shell, the entity of the piece shell has an entity attribute that is the object of this material. Alrighty. After we've done that, we'll then do a couple more creation steps. So we'll create a analysis parameter. This is the, uh, the HyperMesh data name for these load step inputs. So we'll define it as frequency EIGRL and then define num roots from our predefined variable and then pass one for the V1 attribute. We'll then generate a new load step and give it a name of normal modes. We'll set the OS type to three. This is the equivalent of down selecting to that normal modes type, and then point to the structural method ID that is our load step input. For our final step, we'll generate a new model name that is essentially our uh, file path to our, our script directory and then appending IBM Python. Uh, we then will write a new model file. This is essentially a save as operation. And with this hm underscore answer next, yes, uh, we are telling HyperMesh that if you were to give us a pop-up that says, are you sure you want to overwrite any existing file, we automatically confirm, uh, yes, we do. With that, let's go ahead and run this script. So. I'll first start by grabbing the path to my file. 
And then from my Python window, again, this is, uh, let's make this a bit bigger, this Python window. Uh, let's go ahead and get our working directory. We'll change to the directory of our script, verify where we're at, uh, and then I want to run this normal modes model build. So I'll just type run normal. Once you get a little bit into the name, you can just hit tab to proceed. And once I hit enter, it will run through this whole process. So we've imported our model, we generate our mid surfaces, we then remove our holes, generate mesh, we let our, uh, we report back to the console the number of elements. Um, we can use control plus scroll to increase the size of this text here. We'll report back the material uh, assignment values that this material, let's make this a bit bigger. Just go full screen. That the material aluminum was assigned to the property of thickness 125, and that we have a new load step with our name and normal modes of 10 roots uh, greater than our assigned value. So that's our demo. I've attached the model and files, so feel free to give this a run on your own. Thanks for watching.